Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Kathy Koglazer again, and I'm talking to you today about these four sample essays. If you haven't read the four essays, then be sure that you get the, the copy of them and read them yourselves, because today I'm going to tell you what the actual decision was by the college to which they were um, submitted. Um, so I don't want, I want you to make that choice sort of role playing what it's like to be a college admissions officer. That's going to help you tremendously knowing in, as you compose your essays, how do I write the essay so that it is like the more successful aspects of these essays. So this college, which uh, unfortunately I can't uh, share with you the name, but it's a very good college. And it had, um, it was towards the end of the admissions process. And they said, here are four essays. Everything else about the kids are pretty, um, you know, similar. You know, good grades, good SAT, ACTs, uh, nice extracurriculars, excellent recommendations. But they were getting towards the end of their, of their com completing their class. So, you know, it can't take everyone. So they want, they use this essay to do, sort of put all those factors together and decide which is the one student of these four they could take. Um, almost always, um, the essay is read last by your admissions you know, office and as it sort of puts together everything, your personality and all the information and makes you seem like a real three-dimensional person, even though you're just on paper. So I thought I'd first just quickly go through and talk about, I usually, I love to do this with, with you live so that I can find out what you're thinking um, in around the room. But um, unfortunately we can't do that uh, today. Um, I want you to know it is perfectly okay uh, for you to have made the wrong choice. Um, I think it will just be informative to you. And if we work together privately, um, you can tell me about it. And it, it is informative because it'll help me know what is the aspect of writing the essay that I should most work on. Uh, all these four essays have some positives and even and all of them have some negatives. So, but which one was ultimately the most successful? That's our uh, task today. Okay, so let's talk off with Purple Hair Girl. Now, Purple Hair Girl is a pretty lively essay. Um, and most students who read that say, I really felt I got to know her. Um, I mean, she even talks in fragments and slang like, okay, bummer, I'll deal with it. Um, and then she, and she doesn't give a story, but she gives a lot of detail. So you really get to know her, um, how she thinks about herself um, and what, you know, what she likes to do. She's provocative. Um, she even says, you know, this is how I live my life, uh, trying things out there. And then you, you sort of wonder, ooh, everything. But then she says things like sour, you know, I will never have sour cream on my back baked potato. So she tries to be funny as well. And then she mentions this, these aspects of even her personal dating life. Um, usually I don't think those are, those are little touchy issues to bring in, but she does it in a kind of, you know, humorous, again, lighthearted way. The drawbacks to this essay, the negatives of this essay, is it's not very academic. Um, and now that, is, that was her choice, clearly. Um, it's possible that she had very strong academic recommendations. She has really strong grades. And her feeling is, I want them to know me uh, and it's sort of what I'm like as a person, as a personality. And that actually is not a bad approach. Um, it should, it's, should be that as you write each of your college essays, you're looking for the, uh, for the school to know who you are, not, you know, how do you think? How do you see the world? Don't try to be something you're not. Some of us are very humorous, stand up comic like, others of us are not. Um, be true to yourself and authentic. And this is sort of who she is. I'd like to suggest that the end of the essay, um, the last sort of four or five lines there at the very bottom, I think that saves the essay, even though it's not academic, from being too risky. Because notice what she says. 
Um, from my experiences, I've learned that no matter what happens to me, I'm not going to give up. I'll always keep trying, never regretting anything, because I know that just by the attempt, I have succeeded in overcoming the biggest obstacle, obstacle of all, fear. And once I've done that, there's nothing, nothing else can stand in my way, not even purple hair. So it's sort of a pleasant uh, artistic end to the essay, coming back to the purple hair of the first line. But she also then basically tells the college, I'm a survivor. I know how to deal with, with uh, you know, disappointment. I know how to deal with mistakes and I will bounce back. And again, who's ever humorous personality? Um, let's look at number two. Number two had a really nice little starting, you know, bang, starter's pistol. There, and there I was on the starting block, four-year-old me, not knowing whether to dive in or cry. I, I rather liked that. It was a catchy opening line. Um, this essay also used something that some students want to use, which is a reference to another piece of literature or wisdom or quote or such. And in this case, it was Robert Frost's poem, Two Rows Diverged in a Yellow Wood. Now notice that in this essay, that that poem and that poet is not ever mentioned. And the in introduction, you know, the use of it, you know, which is what, two, in two times there, um, is indented, is put in italics, is put in quotes. That's not proper form. We can overlook that, but I don't think that it's good to put any kind of pieces of writing in your piece, uh, in your essay, without giving credit to who actually wrote it. Um, this is a pretty famous poem, so it's not like the admissions officers would probably think you had written it. Um, obviously, this is a kid who, like two different rows, if you know the poem, chose a different path in life. Um, but the poem, the, it, there's no conclusion on it. And in fact, if you would take this, this, uh, if you, you know, do a word count on this, I'll tell you what it is. It's 211 words. It looks like it's a longer essay because it's in 14 point font and it's bolded um, and spread out on the page with this indentation of the poetic lines. So this essay has a real negative in the sense that it is uh, too short. When you are given 650 words and you only use 211, I think you're, you're, you're somewhat telling the college, there's not much more to say to me. And given that the essay, the poem, and the kids were, ooh, sorry, uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't ever kind of come into a conclusion, it seems an unfinished essay. Uh, the third essay, is the one which I think some of you, um, I've always had students who like this essay. Um, it is uh, a five paragraph essay, very well organized. I've gone through this essay several times trying to find an error. And I don't think there is one. There's, there, all the punctuation is correct. All the words are spelled uh, well, um, it's organized. It's got the beginning question. You're saying, here's, you know, it was an open-ended question from this college, you know, and he goes, here's what I wish you had asked. He has three different points, and then he concludes with the job experience has enabled me to develop an understanding of the world around me. So I think this is a pretty nice kid. Um, I think there's a huge missing part of this essay, however. And if you chose it, I, I want you to sort of stop and, and, and listen really carefully. There's obviously this is a kid that can write well and knows how to do it, but by being so wonderfully cautious about the punctuation and the organization, I think we don't get to know this kid. We don't have much of a voice for this kid. Uh, we don't have um, uh, any details of experience. And, and I think, I guess my overall view is that this is a sad essay um, because I bet this is a terrific kid, uh, but I don't get to know him. I don't know if it's male or female. Um, I don't know personality at all. Uh, they're all just clear, nice statements, but nothing, anything personal. Telemarketing, I mean, you probably get some of these robo calls, but before when they were live, telemarketing people call you, 
I mean, people would do all kinds of crazy things. You know, they would sometimes hang up on them, sometimes, be, you know, be mean to them. Sometimes they'd play with them and kind of, you know, mess around with them. Although a lot of telemarketing are genuinely good people selling like this was, I believe some uh, insurance that they thought was uh, valuable to people and they didn't have to come into an office so they could tell them here. Um, so in this particular essay, you have what's missing are stories. I never hear this, this kid really talk. I don't know what this, um, what was it like to go into work on a, on a morning and how many hang up calls did you get? How do you keep your spirits up? Um, how did you know you really believed in the company if you were selling this over the phone? Um, how many successes did you have? Who do you remember? What, what were the, the great calls that you do remember? Um, and again, when you the boss gave you know the person uh, keys to the you know, place, and this, he's pretty young, you know, he's 16, 17 years old. So what does this say? Is he interested in business? He's clearly responsible. How did he show that responsibility? Did anybody who worked with him who was older not like him? There's just so much detail missing. So storytelling is the best way to write an essay, not a five paragraph essay. So you just want to talk to him. And if he said, one Saturday I went in and I had 15 hangout calls, but then I got this great woman in Idaho. And then talk about what it was like to talk about her needs and insurance and how he was able to help her. Um, something like that would have shown these great qualities of you know, being responsible and um, being mentally determined. Um, if you tell me that you're confident, I'm not necessarily have to believe you, but if you show me through a story your confidence, then I believe you. This boy tells too much, doesn't show. Okay, the last one, the dear person. Um, again, I don't think I know um, the gender of this, but let, let's call it a girl just for the sake of a variety here. Um, and this is a story that I think uh, a lot of my students often relate to. They're from uh, another culture, another country, another language, and they've come to this country. And for a while, I mean, younger kids just pick up language so much faster than older people. Um, and so he had to become the translator for his family. And he learns through a New York Times article that he opens up the piece with, um, that that is, uh, you know, a lot of students have to do that. Um, so A, well-written English, not, not totally smooth in all places, not a real command of voice, but you know, a nicely written personal essay telling stories. Um, the New York Times is a little, um, I think might have made, that part might have been a better conclusion. Um, and I would have thought if even more story form, what was it like to walk in the bank that day, sit in front of that bank manager, and have the manager say, your parents have to you know, file bankruptcy. And you know that very devastating information for a few seconds before your parents do. And you have to be the deliverer of it. That's poignant. That's a really strong story. So I think it, in some ways, could have been an even more effective essay. However, I think, you know, what they wrote is really good. Here's, a, here's the problem for a college now. Let's go back in. We have purple hair girl, funny, fun, you know, sort of funky girl that, you know, always is, likes to take uh, around, uh, take challenges and do risky things that are sort of, you know, you make her a stronger person. Um, you have this other student who wants to be really different from his family, but didn't write as long an essay. Then you have the telemarketing. Here's somebody who's been working from a young age in a big business, a real business, a mature one, and learned a lot of qualities. And then you have the last one. So all of these are redeeming kids. Okay, so I hope you have a decision of who you took. And I'm probably gonna surprise you for some of you. They took number one. And I think if you remember from my folder essay about the role of the essay, um, there's something called luck always in every folder that you submit. Um, and I think the luck for this young woman was she was lively, she was enthusiastic, she had a real sense of herself, 
And I bet at this point they said she'd be great to our school. We need a spark plug person like this. Now, I also think this was a risky essay. I think she very much could have, you know, someone said, well, she's fun, she's pleasant, but, you know, this is not the right, we need a more serious student. Or this is, you know, why didn't she talk about some of her academics more? So I think it was risky, but sometimes being risky can win because you want to be authentic. And this is an authentic essay. The, um, on number two, that was the first one they dismissed. So they sent a reject letter to number two. Again, saw some potential, but the essay had not been really well thought out or completed. Um, you know, they even wondered either the kid had a lot of time management problems or possibly the kid really didn't want to go to the school and just is dashing something out at the last minute. Uh, it just didn't look like a serious candidate. Number three, I told you this is a sad essay, and this is sad. This was also a rejection, not because they didn't think this was an able student, obviously this student writes well, um, but there wasn't any story there. No person, they don't know what they're getting. Um, number one, they know what they're getting. Um, it may not be what you would want as a college admissions person, but it was clear that who that person was. It's not clear who number three is. Number four broke their heart. They, they, you know, they sent um, a wait list to number four and was very much, you know, at the last time I talked to the admissions office, wanted to accept them. So I'm hoping that it, it happened. Um, I think maybe luck worked against this uh, candidate only in the sense that maybe they had a lot of, you know, um, first generation kids and for the other ones either had slightly better grades or maybe a slightly better essay but they liked this student very much did not want necessarily to reject him and hoped that maybe with some other students choosing at the last minute not to go to their college they could give um, this person um, a chance okay so those are the decisions um, when you work with um, a college uh, tutor or essay tutor uh, you might see um, you know, talk about where do you fall with this? What kind of writing do you come up with um, sort of naturally? And then what were some of the mistakes these people made that you could um, have improved upon with yours? So I hope they help you see what kind of essay, personal essay, voice-driven essay, is very different from academic writing you've been doing in school. So good luck with doing this, and I hope this uh, program, uh, this video helped you a little bit in this exercise to know what's going on. I never saw Lee's name. I never saw Lee's name. I never saw Lee's name. I stopped sharing, but I don't know what I did. <laughs> I, don't, I might be a little raggy at the end. Okay. Oh, here's the end meaning. I didn't see okay. that.